Hello, I'm Luca Torix, and welcome to part 23 of the Greek Cities campaign on Rome Total War. And, well, we left last episode on a bit of a cliffhanger, because basically the Thracians attacked us, sort of on the area outside of Tylus, but actually, they attacked us on the bridge. So, we only have 600 men, but they have nearly 1,400. So normally I'd be quite worried about that, but... As you can see here, the balance of power, the strength ratio is 1 to 1. It is pretty even fight. And the reason is, of course, we've been attacked on a bridge. So we have the sort of defensive advantage in that respect. And also, our troops made up of pretty much all hoplites with quite a few armoured hoplites with some good experience, some of them as well. I mean, this unit over here, can't click on them, but this unit over here really is quite solid indeed. Now, the Thracian army is actually not too bad. There's quite a few Falksmen, and Falksmen are pretty solid unit. I mean, good morale, 14 attack, 10 defence. Do not underestimate Falksmen, I'm a, I'm a big fan of them, but I still don't think on the bridge against a ton of armoured hoplites they're going to do a huge amount of damage. We've got Peltas as well, they're not going to do a huge amount of damage, particularly in the melee. And then we've got a bunch of cavalry, which of course against hoplites are going to do nothing at all. So, I'm not hugely scared by this army, I would be a little bit worried if we were on the open field. But considering we're actually on the bridge, I think we stand a very good chance. Now, if we do defeat this army very solidly, then probably, because this geezer is around here, Gaidrius is around here, we can probably look to be going up north towards Campus Getai, and then if he moves up north, we can bring a force over from Byzantium to go and take Tylus. Bear in mind, Bylazora is already about to be under siege. We couldn't quite get there the last turn. So anyway, enough talking. Let's do this fight. Damianos of Thessaly, he's been brought over to deal with the Thracians, the 33-year-old. He really needs to prove himself. He's getting on a little bit as well. So I think it's time to start the battle and we'll see how things go. But I, I think we should win this one. So here we are, and oddly enough, the road kind of curves in the middle, I, I don't know. You would have thought they would have just built the bridge, like, where the road is, so it would have been a nice straight line. But anyway, that that's quite irrelevant. So, yeah, that really is a bit odd. Now, looking at the crossing points, it looks like, which absolutely benefits us, that there is only one crossing point, and it is the bridge itself, which is perfect. It's exactly what we want. Now, it's really unfortunate we don't have any missile fire. I'd love to have a unit of Cretan archers right now, but you know what? It's fine. We can live. Now, we basically want to pack the entrance to the bridge full of armoured hoplites so that it's basically an impenetrable wall of spears that nobody, even quite a few forksmen, are going to be able to get through. So, really, we just need to... We can't move them exactly to the... Um, the bridge straight away but we can certainly move them nearby so what we'll, have, we'll do we'll have probably i reckon what three units guarding the gate the thing is the annoying thing is there's little gaps in here so it's probably better to actually just have two units like that and there's less gaps so even then there's still a few but it's all right we can sort of go maybe like that would that be better i think that would be better then there's no lines in the in the actual phalanx let's see if that works i know it's a little bit sort of manic but that's quite hard to get through. Then we're going to have probably another unit of hoplites in behind them. Just so it's even harder to get through. So we'll have another unit like that. Just spread out a little bit more. Just in case people get around the sides. And then we'll have... Who else have we got? We've got a unit of... I don't particularly want the mercenary hoplites to get involved. We'll have them at the very back. But we'll have armoured hoplites on either side. Kind of like this. And like that. And then we'll have the mercenary hoplites just at the very back. Because as I say, if they break, could screw everyone over. Damianos himself, honestly, just stay back here. You're not really going to be getting involved much. Now, I'm actually going to have these guys out of Phalanx just for the very beginning because I want them to run into position super quickly and then obviously they'll get into Phalanx. So we'll start the battle and we'll pause it straight away. So they have spawned right next to the bridge, which, you know, isn't exactly ideal, but it's okay. We can deal with it. So we're going to have... We'll sort out the guys that are going to be at the very front. So we're just going to run forward, run forward. And I think we're pretty much in position. We'll just wait a second... Now, I don't know if I'm really doing quite the best here. I mean, that is maybe a little bit too compact from us, but I, I still can't really see the... I mean, they're leading with the... Oh, they're leading with the Falksman. I thought they were leading with the Peltas, which would have been lovely. As soon as one unit breaks the Thracians... It, 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 oh, look at that. They're already down to Shaken. And they should be down a lot worse. That's the thing. Falksman, they've not got the most amazing defence. They're already wavering. That's the bad thing about Falksman. In fact, they're pretty much... Yep, they're already broken. There you go. They don't, they're, they're, they're shirtless. Which, you know, you would have thought was a bad idea going into battle. We are armoured, hence the name Armoured Hoplites. So, really, I mean, it, it should be no contest. They should just be going down really quickly. Even though they've got a good attack, they won't be able to reach us because we've got spears. And then, defensively, 
what they're going to do. In fact, let's get my general up a little bit forward, just because when the whole army collapses, which I'm hoping will happen, we need someone to chase them all down. But yeah, I mean, look, two units have come in, two units are broken, and it's just going to load them around everyone else. Everyone's going to break a lot quicker. So uh, I feel a little bit sorry for the Thracians. Not sorry enough, to be honest. I actually offered them an alliance. If you remember, long, long ago, I offered them an alliance when we were still at war with Macedon. They said no, and, well, they're paying the price now. I've wanted peace with the Thracians the whole time, but we have to go and deal with them now because otherwise they're just going to keep attacking our cities and they've already taken Bilazor off of us, so we need to be a little bit careful. So anyway, more units are coming in and you can see Steady, Shaken, I mean Peltas, they're not even throwing their javelins, they've just charged straight in. If you look at the amount that has been killed, it is 1% to 21%, I mean it's no contest. If this was not on a bridge, it might be a different story, but it, 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 this is going to be an absolute massacre, I can tell already. I can absolutely tell already. And the beautiful thing is, the routing units that are trying to route back to where they came from, they can't escape because they've got their own units over this way and then my units over here. They, they have to, they're going to have to keep running into the spears even though they're broken. And yet, yeah, large amounts of them are collapsing now. Just so good to see. So good to see. That is a lot of dead blue. And yeah, I mean, they're throwing the odd javelin over, which but not causing that much damage because we're so well armoured that they're suffering and then as soon as they break they're going to go down so quick. So really the only units that are remaining are the cavalry and the units right at the very back which hasn't, haven't physically touched our, our units yet. But otherwise we're doing perfectly fine. Very, a very stupid mistake for them to attack in the bridge. Never attack a unit that's on a bridge but the AI doesn't really know what it's doing that much so that's a, that's a shame for them. And then, this is just ridiculous. Now they are just charging the cavalry. I mean the cavalry, militia cavalry. What are they going to do? They're just charging in, getting churned up, and I don't even know if we're going to have to chase any of them down. They're so eager. There we go, their captain's gone down as well. That that whole army is pretty much routing. In fact, there's only one unit that isn't routing. So there you go, victory. Let's just get the general running to the very back. And general, would you like to... I'm clicking. Dude, would you like to move? Thank you. Yeah, run to the very back and just churns many of them down. I think we're going to get these guys down to the last man. We're going to get about 1,400 kills. That's Captain Denja, please, down. We're going to get about 1,400 kills and, what, probably about <laughs> seven losses for us? Oh, dear, Thracians. That, I mean, I said at the beginning this was a pretty even fight. I, I, I don't know what I was thinking because it just wasn't. Now, there we go. Clear victory. Took a while. Yeah, 1,343 kills to 32. Yeah, that's a very clear victory game. We basically are at full strength. And one of the biggest Thracian forces, along with the guy that's down at uh, Tylus, has been taken down. So the Thracians have just thrown away one of their only remaining good armies. And, I mean, I'm happy about it. So that's all good. Anyway, we're midway through the turn, so let's just see what else goes on. Rebels, oh, well, there you go. Basically, the turn was ended. Okay, so let's have a look at what's going on then. End of turn report. So, uh, yeah, we can get rid of that. Most advanced faction is us. Cool. And in faction announcements, we have Damianus of Thessaly gets good commander, and you get a runner. So you are starting to prove your worth a little bit, which is beautiful. I don't think you really need those mercenaries, to be honest. I think we should be fine. So I think the question remains what to do with the Thracians. So let's have a look. Well, Bylazora is now going to be put under siege by Melias of Heraclium. This, yeah, the angry guy is what we call him. The angry guy, because he really does look angry. I, you know, I don't know what that's about. He's not even got a trait, I don't think. We'll have a look at him in a second. I don't even think he's got a trait that makes him wrathful or anything like that. He's a good attacker. He's a bureaucrat. So, okay. Confident commander and financially irregular. He looks angry. He just does. He looks like someone's annoyed him. Anyway, this spy probably needs to just have a look at the Dacians just in case they get any stupid ideas. But again, if we want to go and take the Dacian territory, I think we can do it easily because their units are just so inferior. So we can't really see anything. That's absolutely fine. So now, what is Damianos of Thessaly going to do? Well, there's no point in him attacking this army here outside of Tylus if there's basically nothing in Campus Getai. Three units, probably couple of Falksmen and a Peltast or something like that. So we, we might as well just move up here. So in fact, if we get my general to put Campus Getai under siege, we're hoping there's no one around. There isn't, in fact. So put it under siege, just build a couple of rams for the second, and then get the rest of the army to come and join you. Like so. And then, well, 
the Thracians don't look in a very good position. And they're the same mercenaries, yeah, they're the same mercenaries, that's fine. Unfortunately, we cannot get an alliance with the Scythians, which is very annoying because I don't want to go towards Scythia. I mean, how much they got on Campus City? Yeah, a lot. I just don't want to go towards Scythia. You know, I don't want to overexpand this. I have no interest in the Scythian territories. I'm fine. The Scythians have done relatively well at the beginning of this campaign. Quite often, it takes them ages to get Chersonesos and Domus Dolcius Domus up here. But they're, they're, they're doing pretty well. So we need to be a little bit wary of them. But anyway, by Lazora, Campus Getai under siege. So the Thracians are looking in a bit of a bad state. Now, let's just go from left to right. So, what's this army? This army's going to Carthage, isn't it? So, you head over to Carthage, make them a bit happier. Lovely to see green faces in this region. It was all red for so long. Masana's not very happy, incidentally. But, you, you know what I mean. It's, it's getting a lot better. There's a lot of green in this region, which is so good to see. You, you really don't know. Only took me 23 parts to master the public order issues. So, this, this, yeah, this is the navy which is going to bring this general, who is Gurgis of Segesta, over to probably start thinking about going towards Numidia. I mean, oh, I don't know, maybe we should just be focusing on the Italians or the Romans. Sorry, the Italians come quite a bit later. Maybe it would make more sense, you know. Maybe it would make more sense if Gurgis of Segesta actually went towards Segesta and Salona. Segestica and Salona. That would probably make more sense because Numidian territory, not amazing. And I just don't feel like we need it, to be honest. And we actually have quite a lot of force in North Africa. If we wanted to send someone over, we could. So you know what? I'm making the executive decision to, in fact, bring Gurdjoss of Segesta to go and take this territory over here. So get on the boat, mate. And then this force. This force is pretty decent. It's, yeah, it's quite a few men. Now, there's a Scipii navy over there. Let's see how good it is. Well, it's just, what, one Byrene? So... We should be able to take it down pretty easily. Let's just knock him out of the way. Oh, we can't even reach. Well, just start moving over here anyway, and uh, we'll be fine. So that's the situation over there. As for this region, I'm not going to expand into Numidia yet, but it's something I will consider. I'm having my eye on Lepkis Magna over here, considering it's only got two garrison. Maybe we could sneak a ship over there and go and take that at some point. But we don't really have any commanders in this region. We only have one general. He's not the best on the old command front. He's more of a manager. So we'll see. We'll see. So in this region, I'm pretty happy. Now let's have a look towards the Scipii. We've dealt with the Brutii. The Brutii are no more. We now need to look at the Scipii. We have a strong army here. Admittedly, not a huge amount of missile fire, but we did bring some archers over. And then we have an, an army here as well. Now, considering that... The Scipii will probably be babied by the Senate, and the Senate army will come over to help relieve Capua. We do need to be a little bit careful. In fact, we need to bring a strong army over. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take everyone out of Croton, apart from that unit of Cretans, which is looking pretty weak. How unhappy is it going to be? Very unhappy, incidentally. Can we lower the tax rate? Looks like they will be okay if I do that. And in fact, guys, get yourself get yourself a trader. Like That's just basic stuff you haven't even got. So, Doros the Conqueror. Start moving towards the Scipii. Now, you could probably bring over... We, we've... Phaedon of Salinas is pretty decent. And I would like to get him involved in some action as well. But, you see, maybe he could go for the Julii. I think probably the best thing we could do is just to bring... Bring the Armoured Hoplites into Doros' army. And then that is the strongest army we've ever fielded. I think it's right up there. So you need to start moving towards the Scipii. Now, really... You can probably start looking towards the Julii settlements. But to do that, you're going to need some troops of your own. And we don't really have many in the region. So to be honest, I think really you need to just start recruiting. And then eventually you'll be able to get to a point where you can just go for the Julii. Or go somewhere. I mean, you can just stay in Strentum at the moment. That'll be absolutely fine. It's making a lot of money. You'll be good for the finances. Okay, now Greece, we've pretty much sorted. We're just going towards the Thracians. So we've sorted that out already. Let's have a look at what is probably the more important region which is Turkey. We haven't quite unified what is now modern-day Turkey yet. Now, where is... Yeah, this army, this army's taken forever to get over to Tarsus. This is the army of Hippiasa Thebes. Now, the army of Philip over in Mazakar keeps getting knocked back by the Seleucids, but I think it is time to finally get them to move out. So we're going to get you, and this army is so battered. It gets battered every single time. It, it, it never really does a really good job. But you guys, you're not feeling too bad. So move out of Mazakar. Now just get over here for a second. 
Are there any Celestid armies around here? Not sure. To be honest, you get onto the land. Now Tarsus is looking pretty weak. But you see there's quite a few Celestid forces. Now it would take you like one turn to get over to Tarsus. You could easily get over to Tarsus in that amount of time. Now if Philip comes over here, really we need all the hoplites just in one army. So Philip would take like one more turn. I think we're going to leave Hippias of Thebes over here. Because it means that this big, these big armies from Antioch can't get over if we stand right there. Unless they use a ship or something. So we'll just stand here for the moment. We'll then have the big force and we'll then go and attack Tarsus. We can't, we could attack Tarsus now. I'm not in a rush. We don't even have a spy in the region as far as I can tell. Sadly, I would like a spy, but I don't think we have one. Ah, no, we must do. Yeah, because we can see Antioch really clearly. So you, I mean, get inside Antioch. Oh, sorry, Tarsus. 32% chance he will open the gates, meaning we could take it right now. Do we risk it? The thing is, if the gates close, if the gates aren't open, sorry, then it means that this big army of Xenocrates could get over. But you know what? I'm a risk taker. We've got a 1 in 3 chance that we could take Tarsus right now. I've got to take that chance. Please. Oh, love it. Love it. And I, do you know what? I didn't even save. Um, you know, I don't like sort of cheating like that. I, I was just lucky. I was just lucky. I deliberately did not cut it there in the editing because I wanted to prove that was legit. Yeah, that's that's really lucky. Okay, because if that didn't, if that hadn't opened, we might have been a little bit screwed there. But now we can take the city, reinforce, and get also Philip over to Tarsus. And then we can start looking towards Antioch. So anyway, we can take Tarsus right now. Now, unfortunately, we don't have any siege equipment, so it could be a little bit tough. But let's... Oh, but it's only 266 men. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. But let's go and take Tarsus right now. Yeah. I mean, brilliant. What, what good luck that was. Okay, so here we are outside of Tarsus. Now, the awkward thing about this is really we're going to have to funnel through one entrance. Unless, of course, we did decide because I think all four gates should be opened. Yeah, so unless we decided to literally just... That would probably be more sensible if we just came in from two different sides and then we could surround the plaza. Like, we've got a lot of hoplites. We can afford to do it. So if we just split the army in half, we'll have half of you over like this. In fact... We don't want all the armoured hoplites in the same army. Let's get you guys over here. And then the rest, so we'll get you in a little group like that. And then the rest of you can be over here with the Cretans. Now the Cretans, as I say always, so important. So important. Because they draw enemies right into the phalanx. So Cretans can actually be off fire at will and off skirmish mode. Because we want to use them when I want to use them on my terms. So we've got the two different armies. Oops. Two different armies in two different groups. Honestly, don't want the general to enter the city. There's no need for him to do that. Particularly, why would I risk Hippias of Thebes of all people? So what we'll do, we're not carrying a ram, so don't have to worry about that. We'll start the battle and we'll pause it. Now, there's literally no one at this gate. In fact, yeah, that's the good thing about, particularly when there's a small force, about going in two entrance ways because they have to split up the force. And if you've only got 230 men in the first place, you've got to have some in the plaza and some at each gate. They're not going to have a lot of troops. So we can just literally waltz into the city. There should be literally no one. Now the plaza is, looks like pretty much a straight line down here. So you guys just start entering the city at your own pace. That's fine. In fact, you might as well just get out of phalanx, lads. Because you're just going to waste time. And I haven't got all day. So you guys start walking down here. And then you guys. Now there is a little bit at this gate. But what is it? It is... Peltasts. <laughs> oh dear, Peltasts, you're going to have a bad time of it. So basically, we just need to rush the Peltasts. Because they are going to fire the javelins, they are going to do a bit of damage. Literally, just rush the Peltasts. We'll run towards them just to pick up some speed, and then we'll go into Phalanx as soon as we basically engage with them. But yeah, Peltasts will not do anything to to armoured hoplites or hoplites. Now, I'm just checking the mini-map to see that the other guys are safe. It looks like they are. I don't think they've got anything to bring along to them. So just literally rush the Peltas. They will get a few hits on us, but as we saw in the last battle, honestly, it doesn't really do a huge amount of damage. So just come in here, and then we'll get the front unit to actually go into Phalanx as soon as it enters the city. So down like that. Spears down. Beautiful. Attack the Peltas. If you wouldn't mind. I mean, it, 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 going through the front gate like this isn't ideal, but you can see they're already shaken. We're steady. 
in fact we're eager now, and they should be going down relatively quickly. I mean, we shouldn't be moving backwards, we should be moving forwards, all of you should be moving forwards into the Peltasts. But yeah, if we could just get into Phalanx and just, yeah, they're wavering, shaken, they're going to go down quickly. So I'm actually going to look at the other lads to see how they're doing over here. So they are just making their way into the city, and... Yeah, well, you, you guys just sort of make your way over to this sort of mini plaza and we'll work out what we want to do from there. Now, how are the Peltas doing over on this side? They are pretty much non-existent. Yeah, there there aren't any Peltas anymore. So, oh, they're running off. Okay, so it looks like that entranceway leads to the same plaza, incidentally, which isn't ideal. But to be honest, I mean... It doesn't really matter too much. In fact, we, we really don't need all these hoplites. It's so overkill what we've got now. We literally probably needed like four units of hoplites and some cretins, and that would have been enough. But you know what? The more the merrier. Right, so we can't really see what's going on, but we've got Peltas. Well, they're nothing, as we've just seen. We've got Militia hoplites. We, we stopped using you a long time ago. And then the General's Bodyguard, who... Do you know what? I can't remember the guy's name. Is that irrelevant? So what we'll do, I mean, if we could... Bait them onto this plaza, that would be beautiful. So if we could get possibly the strongest hot plates at the front, like this, like that here, and then get another line of hot plates in behind them, and then get the Cretans to fire over into the plaza, baiting them in like that, that would be perfect. That probably is enough to deal with the whole army, legit. So let's just get into that position. Oh, whoa, 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 what happened there? Sorry, some Peltas charged into the back of that unit and broke. I had it on fast forward because I'm just moving the hoplites into position. I didn't think anyone was actually going to come over, but it, it seems like they are. It doesn't look like anyone else is coming over there. It's literally just one Peltas left. I think we can deal with him nice and good. Okay, someone's coming over, so I'm just going to get into Phalanx. If they want to fight, who are you? Yeah, you're, you're, you're Peltasts. Now, guys, I said you get into Phalanx. You don't have to actually move. I'm not sure what's going on, but to be honest, they're going into this unit of hoplites. I mean, I don't know what they're doing. They're, they're complete morons, but you know what? It's, it's welcome. Their, their stupidity is welcome. So, yeah, they are going to, in fact, charge my hoplites. Well, honestly, just speed it up, because I'm doing you a favour if I speed it up. In fact, the generals come in. Well, I mean, okay, absolute madness from the Seleucids, but then I suppose they're not the strongest faction ever. You might as well just come around to help out. I mean, the general's just done a suicide charge. The general has just done a suicide charge. You might as well just get in to back up this unit of hoplites. What is their general thinking? We can surround the general nice and good. We've got our hop... Honestly, the Cretans might probably just... They're probably just doing more damage than good by getting friendly fire. So just stop firing for a minute. If we just surround the general, I mean... What is he thinking? We lost a few hoplites there from the charge. There we go. He goes down. What was his name? His name was Demetrius. I had a feeling it was. I just didn't want to say it just in case. I mean, I thought I was gonna have to bait in, bait, sorry, bait their units with my with my units, but with my Cretans. But okay, I mean, if you just want to, if you want to die quicker, then I, honestly, I don't blame you. I don't blame you if you want to die quicker. Either way, reform the line. We've killed 51% of them with only 6% losses. Considering they're in a defensive position, I'll take that. I'll take that indeed. So we'll get back into position with the spears down and the Cretans. Honestly, now you can focus on the militia hoplites, get them to charge, because that's pretty much the only dangerous unit left, and they were never dangerous in the first place. So hopefully we can evoke a response from them to come over and do exactly the same as what their brethren did, but but worse. Seems like we're not getting a response. In fact, none of them have actually died. Do you know what? Do you know what? Guys, just get in this little group here and just, just walk onto the plaza. Just, just walk onto the plaza, honestly. Oh, no, they look like they're coming over. Stop, stop, stop. If they're coming over, that's fine. Stay in your position. Get back into Phalanx. Just stay where you are. Beautiful. Yeah, no, it looks like they are... Well, they... No. No, okay. You, you, you've, you've decided not to charge into us. Well, you're going to have to at some point because, yeah, you haven't really got a lot of choice. So, let's just get into that little formation like this. And all should be good. These Peltas are going to keep coming off the plaza, breaking straight away. Honestly, it, it, they're just not going to do anything, so I'm not concerned. Yep, there you go. They're going to keep breaking, going back, and so on and so forth in the cycle. Guys, just get them down there nice and quick. Come on. Okay, these guys are coming over. I really wanted to get into that little formation, but it doesn't seem like we're going to be able to. Oh, for goodness sake. Right, okay, stop for a second. This is not exactly going to plan. 
We're losing a bit too many men here. Just get like that so you can deal with the militia hoplite. Cretans just honestly, just just look, just stay where you are and just fire at will. And then we need to get really someone around the side ideally, but I don't think we're going to be able to. Just do this. It's literally just a unit of militia hoplites left. We are perfectly capable of dealing with militia hoplites, okay? We're completely out of position saying that. So really, all of you, just focus on those militia hoplites and just get them down. I'd like to get some of them down around the side. So get, get, get around the back of them. Get around the back. Get around the back. Get around the back. Beautiful. Lovely. That's it. You, get around the side. If we can surround them from all three sides, we'll minimise losses. Because they can't point their... All three sides? There's four sides to a square. But you know what I mean. They can't point their spears in four directions. So it means that we'll take less losses. Hopefully this place has the capacity to retrain armoured hoplites. Although it doesn't look very upgraded. So we'll see. They've got a practice range at the very least. So we're churning them down to the last man. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't have actually used my armoured hoplites because I don't know if we could retrain them. So we might have to do a bit of merging, which is a shame. Real shame. But either way, they're down to five men. They're basically down to nothing. So that's good. Plaza is ours. And there you go. Clear victory. 265 kills to 150. I took too many losses there. But it, that's inevitable, really, if you're going to besiege a place. Particularly when you haven't got siege equipment. The good news is we can now consolidate in Tarsus and then look to build up a force with the reinforcements of Philip to go and deal with the forces of Antioch and Xenocrates, which could be a bit of an issue. So there you go. We'll exterminate these guys. I cannot be bothered to, to deal with public order. And you can see the public order is still bad despite that. Now, what religion do they have? They do have a Greek religion. So it's a Hephaestus over here, which is actually a pretty decent one. Now, the the moment of truth is, can we retrain? We can indeed retrain the armor top It's beautiful. So really, only retrain the units that need to be retrained, which is you guys. And then, honestly, then just retrain the odd unit until... And then like that. And then recruit a unit of... Oh, recruit unit of archers. We need more archers. Beautiful. There's actually quite good facilities here. Lovely to see. And then, yeah, Philip is coming over to Tarsus, which is good. Repairing the walls we don't need to do because they were never broken, but probably getting some wooden walls up would be a priority. So we will we'll do that. Okay, so what exactly is there left to do? Oh, just notice this big Seleucid army over here. Now, the good news is they're probably coming for Tarsus rather than these more vulnerable settlements because we've just take, taken Tarsus off them. But the Seleucids, they've got so much force. They've got the big army at Antioch. They've got a couple of armies around here. They've got Xenocrates, which we can't currently see. And then this army over here. And we've already taken a huge amount of territory from them already. How can they afford this more than anything? I mean, astonishing. They've got so much force. Absolutely amazing. I mean, credit to them. But you would have thought... It, it, really, my question is, what have the other factions been doing in this region? What have the Armenians, the Parthians, the Egyptians, whose job it is to bully the Seleucids... What have they been doing? That's what I want to know. Okay, money's run dry. Everyone has moved basically to where they need to move to. So I do believe it is time to end the turn and basically just see... Oh, the only Ready. people that might... Yeah, this army hasn't moved. Just, yeah, we're moving then towards Cyrene, if you don't know, just because we're going on towards Egypt eventually, but we might as well just take Cyrene in the meantime if the Numidians haven't taken it. They could even sneakily go for Lepkis Magna as well. We'll see. Basically, it depends on timing issues. Either way, let's end the turn. See what happens. Right, turn has ended. The Scipio attack this random naval force. Well, we won anyway, but to be honest, it didn't really matter. Either way, Seleucid... Ah, no. Zeuxis, or that big army, I can't... I don't know how to say it. Did indeed attack Mazakar. Annoying. Okay, annoying. We'll, we'll deal with it. Right, clear defeat. Over there. Yeah, the Seleucids attacked Mazkar, which was very sensible of them. That is exactly what they should have done. I was hoping they were going to go towards Tarsus, which is well in for reinforced, but unfortunately not. We should win this. We do indeed, so that's good. Nice big navy we've got over in Tarsus. Writing in Syracuse, they damaged the Odeon. Why would you damage that building? Damage the barracks if you want to, but don't damage the buildings to make you happy. Right, settlement procedure we know. Faction destroyed. Germania. Why is it telling me this? I... Hellenic courage in battle has played its part in laying low these people. I don't think we were ever at war, Germania. We have absolutely nothing to do with that. But how have Germania done so bad? So this is all this is all Dacian. Oh my goodness, the Dacian and the British, particularly the Dacians, have done very well. But the British, the British are doing pretty solidly as well. 
So the Dacians and British have really formed quite a big empire. I, do you know, I want to get my diplomat over to Dace, or sorry, Dacia, and um, and, and see what's going on. I, I want to get some trade and, sorry, map information off them. That would be awesome. Right, town grows. Kedonia, beautiful. We love Kedonia. Kedonia is a great settlement. So, yeah, get yourself a governor's palace. Probably just recruit a little bit more. Just, just one more unit of peasants, just in case. Even though we probably won't ever need them. So, Kedonia, lovely. Earthquake in Nicomedia. It's killed a few citizens. Honestly, what a great earthquake effect. Honestly, isn't too bad because... It might just help the public order. I know it sounds odd, but lowering the population. So, retinue expands. Penithos of Nicaea gets an orator. Good. And Democritus of Sparta gets a mining engineer. Lovely. Okay, beautiful. So, we'll sort that out in a minute. Construction, recruitment, and alliance between Spain and the Julii. That probably won't last forever, but it could screw the Gauls over, so that's fine by me. Okay. Where do we start? I think we should start with Italy. And the Brutii more... Oh, sorry, the Scipii more. I keep forgetting we've defeated the Brutii. The Scipii more specifically. Now, the big old yes. army of Doris the Conqueror... The mercenaries aren't amazing. The big old army of Doris the Conqueror needs to move... He can barely move at all. Why has he got so little movement points? Has he got some trait where he can't move? I can't see anything that would slow down his movement points at all. I, I can't see any any trait he's got. He's, some, he's got some great traits, by the way. I can't see anything that would slow him down. But is that me, or is that a really short distance for him to travel? Like, I'm, I guess it's mountainous, but I would expect him to, like, travel to at least here. Well, for goodness sake, man. Just travel as far as you can go, then. And again, why can't you build a watchtower? This is our territory. Well, we're very slowly making our way over to the Scipii territory, so... Basically, there's nothing to do there, but there is a ship, this ship over here, in fact, that is going to go towards Segestica. Just stop off outside of Apollonia. In fact, you can merge the navies up. Merge the navies up, and we can retrain the navies. And then there's a few hoplites in Apollonia, so you can join the ship as well. So we've got a bit more force. Apollonia, I'd like you to recruit another Byream just to make sure they're stronger. And then the army on this ship, which is going towards Segestica and Salona, pretty pretty decent. I doubt there's a lot of force over here. The Julii are over here, and then it should be the Dacians up there, yeah. But I, I don't really fear either of them, so that should be fine. I think probably to end the episode, we should deal with the Thracians, particularly by Lazora. There's a Dacian spy around here. The Dacians are having a really cool campaign. I really want to see what's going on, to be honest, but unfortunately, we can't. Yeah, let's get Melas of Heraclium into Bylazora. The Thracians didn't bother to defend it. In fact, we can take Bylazora and Campus Getai right now, potentially, if we have enough time this episode. Either way, if we assault Bylazora, the grumpy guy is going to be against Bryzos. 399 men. Now, two generals could be a little bit tough to deal with. The rest, not hugely scared of. They're Thracians, not Bastarnai, so I'm not too scared. Should be okay. Should, should be okay. I mean... I would prefer a quicker battle, to be honest, to end the episode, just for timing reasons. Would this battle be quicker? It would indeed. Okay, in which case, we're going to take Campus Getai today, and we'll take Bylazora next episode, purely because we've already done two battles, and this episode could be getting on a bit of the long side if we do a longer battle. So, let's let's fight outside of Campus Getai. Next episode, we'll go against Bylazora, and then probably move back down south towards Tylis and finish off the Thracians once and for all which is fine by me. So, what has Captain Suratralis got? He has got a unit of Falksmen, a unit of Greek Cavalry, a unit of Militia Hoplites. Nothing too much. That's the most dangerous unit. Shouldn't be too bad. Let's go and take Campus Getai. Okay, so here we are. Now, this should be pretty simple. A little bit of a foggy day, which is a shame, but you know what? I don't think that's... <laughs> that's not going to stop us. So what we'll do, we have a unit of hoplites over here. And we have a unit of mercenary hoplites. They can carry the ram. The rest of you just sort of get here. It would be nice to have a unit of archers. But as we saw last battle, units are perfectly happy just charging straight into us anyway. So really, we probably don't need them. Either way, let's just get two breaches in. Already units are retreating to the plaza. I don't blame them personally. And we'll get these lads coming up right to the gate. Good. So it looks like they've left one unit of militia hoplites to defend the gate against what, like six units of armoured hoplites? Five units of armoured hoplites? Yeah. Um, good luck with that, Thracians. Good luck with that. But either way, 
we'll make two breaches. What we'll do, we'll pour in the armies, we'll pour in probably, sorry, we'll pour in the units. Probably in this one first, they'll start moving over, then we'll get the other lads in and we'll just surround them, they'll be screwed. We shouldn't take too many losses. As for the generals, just clog the streets up, or eventually the plaza, getting a nice tight formation and they'll just have to charge and... Well, they'll have to die because they're spears in the in the face. So, you know, that's kind of what happens. This is something, uh, by the way, I find funny. It's amusing, there you go, finally, how the rams take so much longer to take down a fence than a gate. Now, this gate, I mean, that looks, what? To be fair, it's wooden, but, like, it's really tightly bolted in. Now, you've got fencing over here. This is just wood. I would have thought it would be a lot quicker to actually take down a wooden fence than a reinforced, or not reinforced, but a door which has been securely tightened on, even if it is wood. I don't even think it is wood, I think it's a bit of metal as well. And that's always something I found a little bit odd. You would really think that it would be a lot quicker to take down the wooden fence, but in fact, in reality, it's the other way around. But either way, don't want the mercenary hotplates to get involved, because why would I get a weaker unit of hotplates to get involved? You guys start coming in through the gate, and as I said, the militia hoplite should start moving towards them because they're the greatest threat. Then we can get these two to come in round the back and they should be gone. Surprisingly, it seems like the militia hoplites are rather uninterested in the fact that a couple of units have just marched into their town. They really don't care. So we'll just start marching towards them in phalanx and hopefully they'll march towards us so we get an opportunity to surround them. But honestly, even if we do just have to charge into the front, two units of armoured hoplites against one militia hoplite, there's no contest either way. They are really uninterested, which is actually slightly annoying, but you know what? This is cool, it's cool. We'll just start edging forward, edging forward. They're, they're going to have to react at some point because they're, they're going to have a spear in the face if they don't react. I mean, they've not even bothered to get into phalanx for us. It's a bit rude. It's a bit disrespectful, especially as you're Thracians and your empire is about to collapse considering we have got um, Bilozora under siege as well. So we'll just sort of surround them like this in an L shape. If, you, if you'd like to do that, just sort of, you know, if you feel like it. If you don't feel like it, then that's fine. Or just move to wherever the hell you want to move. No, get back over here. Okay, this unit is actually engaged. You know what? Just fire into them. You come around here. Come on, it's just grass. You can walk on the grass. Okay, it, it, it doesn't hurt, I promise. It's going to hurt. Oh, do you know what? Just do whatever. Just do whatever. It, the, the militia hoplites are dying straight away anyway. In fact, we've not even taken a single loss and they broke yet. So, and they, they broke and then ran through more hoplites. Very, very clever. Well, they're down. Okay, so we can now get all the other hoplites in. Basically, I'm going to get all them in apart from the mercenary hoplites. Reason is mercenary hoplites just have worse morale. So, it's not terrible morale, but why would I risk a unit breaking when I've just got a ton of perfectly good units at my disposal? So here we are, right next to the plaza. Now, ideally, I'd like to get into sort of like an inverted L shape, where it's kind of like this, and just surround the plaza. The problem is, <sighs> units in Rome Total War don't always do what they're told. So we'll try and get them in a nice L shape, nice and quick, but in reality, it'll probably be a complete mess where we have to churn down a ton of units and then just retrain them later. But as I said, I mean, we can just retrain. Campus Getai isn't the strongest settlement in the world, but it's fine. We, we, we'll find a way of getting these troops back. It's not the end of the world. So what we want, we want three units coming along like this. Try not to actually step on the... We're going to have to get them to step on the plaza, aren't we? Just, yeah, just stand here. And then we're going to get the other three units in a shape, kind of, that's the wrong direction, kind of like that. If we could do that, then they stand pretty much no chance. But they're probably going to charge into us before we can get into that position. Also, why are units walking the wrong way? Morons. Okay, we've entered the plaza and units are starting to react. So guys, guys, just start hitting the Falksman now. Just start getting into the Falksman. They are indeed charging. Just get your spears down. Now they've all charged into this one unit, or three units in fact. So if we can hit them around the side, they should be a little bit screwed. You start coming around the back. Okay, nice and quick. Now we're going to take a few losses. Yeah, we are taking quick losses. So we need to seriously be quick about this and get around the back of them. Okay, so you, into the back. You, into the side. Please, get your spears down and start churning them down. Now, there's still more Thracian. No, that is literally the Thracian force. They piled in them once. So, it should be okay as long as we just get these final units down. I mean, look, you, out of phalanx, just run. Run around the back. If you could get a good charge into the back of those Falksmen, that would be exactly what we need. But you need to be a bit quicker. We've taken a few losses to that unit in particular. So, come, come around here. Come around here. Come around here. 
That's it. Round here, round the back, round the back, into Phalanx, and then hit them into the back. And that should be the end of the, the Thracians in Campus Getai. I thought there were two generals here. Now, I oh no, it was in Bilazora. I'm getting confused. That was the other battle which I decided to do next episode. I was really confused. I was like, well, we killed their captain. I was like, wait a minute, there's two generals. But yeah, no, this is okay. We took... 16% losses, which is more than I would have liked, but yeah, they they caught us a little bit off guard, which is what I was expecting, but it's not too bad. Now, there's no Thracians left. There we go. Clear victory, 216 to 90, so perfectly fine. Is that the second settlement we take in this episode? We took... My memory is terrible. We took Tarsus, didn't we? Yeah, we took Tarsus. So there we go. Campus Getai, and they're unhappy. I mean, really? Do you know what? Screw it. Just exterminate. We, we've got to that point in the campaign where we're just exterminating everything now. So Campus Getai is ours, which is awesome. And then we'll start off next episode by taking Bylazora, which should be pretty simple. I just didn't want this episode to be too long. And then, yeah, as I said, going towards Tylus. So what we'll do, just to end the episode, is get the tax rates. Well, it doesn't really matter the tax rate too much. Just get the walls and get some stone walls, just in case the Scythians get any ideas. As a retraining, we can retrain everyone so we will indeed retrain everyone before we move towards tireless we might as well just be at full strength for that and you know what get a unit of armored hoplites beautiful so that situation over here we now share a border with the Scythians though so we need to be a little bit careful we do need to be a little bit careful this diplomat's moving as far as he can so that's the situation with campus get I sorted and then yeah like i said next episode we've moved towards Cyrene, haven't we Ready. No, we can we can see who's got Cyrene. In fact, I think it's over here. Yeah, it's Rebel, and it's basically empty. And it's already... You can see it's already been attacked because the walls are a bit broken, and there's basically nothing in there. Beautiful, we can just go and take Cyrene. It's already actually got walls. It's already a town. It's not tiny. So if we could just... Can we step off? I don't think we can quite step off, but to be honest, it's fine. We could actually put it under siege right now with the cavalry. We'll do that. Put it under siege with the cavalry. Just build a ram. Oh, the ram takes two turns to build anyway, so it's kind of irrelevant. Well, whatever. We can... Yeah, we'll, we'll sort that out next time. Either way, Cyrene should be ours pretty quickly. How many settlements do we have now? We have 30... No, that's family members, sorry. 26 regions controlled. So, bear in mind that's going to be 28 within the next couple of turns, because we're going to take Cyrene and Bylazora. And then, you know, it should be getting up pretty quickly at this point. We have got to a point where we're expanding at a fast rate, which is lovely to see. So next episode, we will be moving up towards the Scipii. We will be taking Bylazora and moving towards Tylus. And then with the, the Seleucids, we need to work out how we're going to defend Mazakar and how we're going to go forward against the forces of the Seleucids at Antioch. Then after that, it's focusing on probably the Egyptians if the Seleucids are gone by that point. So much elated force, it's ridiculous. Anyway, and of course, we're going towards Salona and Segestica in this region with this navy as well. So, a lot is going on, a lot of capacity to expand very, very quickly in the next few episodes. So anyway, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you around.